Welcome to Euro PCR 2024. My name is Valeria Paradies from the Netherlands, and I have the pleasure to be here today with uh, Vasilis Panulas from UK. So we're going to discuss the man management of and the optimal treatment of patients with coronary artery disease and left ventricular dysfunction. So Vas, could you tell us more about uh, your thoughts, your takes from the REVIVE trials? So what did we include in this study? What did we left out? What are the, the patients we left out from the study and we want to know more about? Yeah, it's, it's a very um, topical and challenging yeah. subject. A lot of uh, discussions have happened about whether we should revascularize this group of patients or not. People, I think, are still confused, and I think it's nice to lay the land of what we think is probably appropriate in, yeah. in our current practices. I think the REVIVE trial was very useful in telling us that very stable people, and by stable they meant people that did not have any non-STEMI or STEMI, no heart attacks that is, um, they didn't present with any acute heart failure in the last month, and the majority of them did not have symptoms in terms of angina, so if you take someone like that, and, and geographically, you find 70% uh, lesions um, in a big territory of your heart, then you can afford not to go and revascularize and just treat them with optical medical therapy. And that obviously means including the four pillars of heart failure and potential uh, ICD treatments. And if you do that, these people will do as well as those that you would go and revascularize during that time. In my experience, the only issue I had with this trial is the exclusion criteria, that exactly the majority of the patients we see in clinical practice are uh, some that come with symptoms. They come to you with really nasty angina, or they are the ones that come with heart attacks and the ones who come with um, hospitalization from heart failure. So these are the ones that I think interventional cardiologists and generally the cardiology community is dealing with on a day-to-day -day basis. And for those patients, we don't still have the answer uh, to the question. I, I don't know what your thoughts are on the subject, but this is where I am. Well, that's a really good uh, point you raised about uh, uh, the presence of symptoms, because indeed we know that in the REVIVE trial, one third of the patient had anginal symptoms. That's, that's a really important point you raised. There are some pitfalls of the trial, and we can talk about uh, the enrollment time, but there are also some uh, data, recent data, about uh, viability and uh, uh, no correlation indeed with the, with the presence of viability and uh, um, allocation treatment and outcome. So what are your thoughts about uh, viability? Do we need to do the viability test? I think um, our normal clinical practice tends to incorporate both viability and ischemia. Uh, and I think that's also very important to highlight that in the revive we didn't see invasive ischemic tests. For example, lesions were treated when sometimes maybe they shouldn't have been treated according to the pressure wire studies. But the reality is that in our MDTs, what we do when we find symptomatic patients, uh, we tend to subject them to viability tests, yeah. albeit with a stress MRI or, uh, or an MPS scan. And then we would go and do invasive treatment. And in the invasive treatments, we would again do pressure wires and decide which lesions are functionally significant. And then Obviously, if you have a multi-vessel uh, disease, you would consider bypass even in those with those poor LV function. And if there is a surgical turn down, then it will fall back to the heart team to decide how we're going to treat this patient with or without mechanical support, because that's the other That's element. the other issue. Yeah. But okay, that's a sensitive topic for interventional cardiologists. Okay, let's say we have to revascularize this patient because we think it has symptoms or dysfunction. We can perform either PCI or surgery. So what's, what's the best treatment for this patient? So, so far the trials we have, the stitches probably suggest that surgery might be a better option, but equally was done in an era that we didn't have the optimal heart failure treatment and probably not as many on an ICD therapy. Nonetheless, it's there, that's the evidence we have. And our practice now says, if they can't have surgery, by all means, there seems to be the bigger benefit, particularly when they have viability. If they cannot have surgery, then it falls back to the heart team to decide. And I think that's a nice uh, conclusion for us to make. Yeah. And um, so about your daily practice, the current practice, 
uh, you see a patient with, uh, with the no symptoms, what would you do? And that's this puncture, what would you do with this patient? So we do angiography first of all. If, That's an yeah, important point. If we find out that he has poor LV, we would go for a CT assessment. And if the CT picks up, for example, a tight left main that obviously was excluding ischemia, then we would go to invasive angiography. If that shows some uh, epicardial disease that probably with no, is no ischemia in particular, or ischemia in one small territory, I think medical therapy is a very, very sensible thing to do. For this patient. Yeah, and I have to agree on that and I, I probably would like to conclude uh, saying that uh, with, for patients with symptoms and uh, coronary artery disease and uh, left ventricular dysfunction, we should proceed for revascularization. Whether to do PCI or surgery, well, the, the stitch t trial will answer that this works. question. Um, while when we have patients with no symptoms and same characteristics, we should probably go, go for optimal medical therapy and meaning that we have to use all the portfolio we have now for, for, to treat these patients and also consider a resynchronization therapy because that's on top of the optimal medical therapy. Absolutely. Thank you for the attention.